to my channel, I hope you're well. This is the third episode in the Tectonic Hazards and Processes series and today we'll be talking about understanding earthquakes. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe down below. Let's get into this video. 95% of the world earthquakes occur along tectonic boundaries. About 10,000 people per year are killed by earthquakes. It happens when the pressure builds up in fault and suddenly is released as seismic waves. The point where pressure is released is called the focus or the hypocenter. The point directly above that on the surface is called the epicenter. This is where most of the shaking and damage occurs. What are seismic waves? Energy is released through seismic waves and they radiate out from that specific point. There are three main types of seismic waves. Primary waves, there's secondary waves and there's love waves. Primary and secondary waves are classed as body waves because they travel through the Earth's body, whereas love waves are surface waves, they travel across the Earth's surface. Seismic waves are measured using a seismometer. This can help scientists to calculate the time, the location and the magnitude of the earthquake. So to break it down, the three types of waves, primary waves first, they are the fastest and first to reach the surface. They travel through both solids and liquids and shake in a backwards and forwards motion. However, they are only damaging in the world's most powerful earthquakes. The second type of earthquake is secondary waves. These are slower. They're about 60% of the speed of the primary waves. They only travel through solids. These move more in a sideways motion, shaking at right angles to the direction of travel. And the third type of wave is love waves. These are the slowest and often the last to arrive, but they cause the most damage. They shake the ground from side to side. They are larger and focus all their energy on the Earth's surface, which is why typically they are the ones that cause the most damage. How are earthquakes measured? Through magnitude. This is the amount of energy released on the epicentre, so at the Earth's surface where the earthquake hits and radiates from there. The moment magnitude scale, or MMS, is the preferred method of scale. It is accurate and better at measuring larger earthquakes. It measures the total energy released at the moment it occurs, using the size of the seismic waves, the amount of slippage of rock movement, the area of the fault broken by the Earth's surface, and the resistance of the affected rocks. The scale goes from 1 to infinity, but it generally stops at 10. The largest recorded earthquake ever was in Chile in 1960 and that was measured at a 9.5 magnitude. This is a logarithmic scale, so each number is 10 times the size of the magnitude before. So a magnitude 2 earthquake is 10 times the size of a magnitude 1 earthquake, in the same way that a magnitude 3 earthquake is a hundred times the size of a magnitude one earthquake. I hope that makes sense. So the effects of an earthquake. An earthquake's impact depends on a number of factors, both physical and human. An earthquake's effects are classified as either primary or secondary effects. So what are the primary effects of an earthquake? There's ground shaking, which causes infrastructure to collapse, which can kill or injure many people. There's also crustal fracturing, this is the energy that is released that causes the earth to crack. What about the secondary effects then? Liquefaction. This causes the rock to lose strength and become more liquid than solid. It has the ability to sink roads or buildings, making rescue missions a lot more difficult, such as the Loma Prieta quake in 1989. I'll leave some links down below if you would like to research more into that. Another secondary effect are landslides or avalanches. Shaking places stress on the slope so that rocks or snow falls. These account for a large proportion of the damage and injuries caused by earthquakes. Another secondary effect, which we'll touch on more in two weeks time, are tsunamis. Some underwater earthquakes can cause tsunamis. It causes a displacement of the water above, which can if, it's, if it is close to land, can cause a massive flood. Aftershocks. As a result of the earth settling down after a large quake, these can cause additional damage. 
In 2011, a 6.3 magnitude earthquake hit Christchurch in New Zealand after the original 2010 quake. The 2011 quake was very shallow and resulted in a lot of ground shaking and it was actually quite close to the city itself. How do you predict earthquakes? There's no method that is completely accurate in predicting earthquakes. Most quakes occur along plate boundaries. However, research today focuses on identifying warning signs called precursors. Many look at aftershocks, but there is no reliable signs that an earthquake is about to happen. That is the earthquake section of the Tectonic Hazards series, completely done for you. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you found something useful. If you would like access to the document that I'm using and kind of reading through, um, I made this during my A-levels. It's based off the this textbook. All my notes are based off this textbook, the Geography for Red Excel Year 1 book, which I used to draw my levels again. If you would like access to that, I'll leave the link down below. Feel free to just go download it, it's just on a Google Drive. Um, please don't edit it, please just download a copy for yourself and then you can edit it. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Um, come back next week, same time, same place, Monday at 4.30pm and that will be the next video. So thank you so much for coming. Please subscribe down below. Don't forget to share this with someone who you think might find it useful and I will see you in my next one. Bye.